And now for the remainder of this podcast, this will be simulcast on uh, in both audio form for the Voices of Wrestling Podcasting Network and for YouTube with a visual element for all those watching on YouTube. So since the coronavirus has everyone quarantined and isolated and indoors where they can go nowhere but inside the four walls of their home. No crowds can congregate. No audiences can get together. No wrestling events can happen. No sports events can happen. Well, unless they're in empty buildings. So, with that I figured we would revisit some of the largest attendances in pro wrestling history. What are the biggest attendances in all of pro wrestling history? And here they are, listed in an Excel spreadsheet for those of you who can see it. So, we've got how many how many listed here? I'm going to show a uh, a, a graph as well. But uh, some of these attendances are uh, are total attendances. It's hard to say what they really mean. When we talk about attendance, I think it's important to to point out before we go any further that when someone says attendance, there are different ways to uh, to look at attendance. Sometimes when people are talking about attendance, they're talking about the paid attendance, the number of tickets that were sold for an event. That's one way of measuring attendance. Then sometimes people are talking about the number of people that are in the building, and sometimes they're even trying to include the staff, the personnel, the workers, the wrestlers, etc., as well as the spectators. And uh, so, so sometimes you're talking about the people who paid for tickets. Sometimes you're talking about the people who paid for tickets plus the comps, the people who were there for free. Sometimes you're talking about the people who paid for tickets, who, who were there as comps, and the people who are working the event in whatever capacity. Not to mention that attendances throughout wrestling history and probably other sports have been inflated, fabricated, lied about, exaggerated, what have you, including probably some of the numbers here. Uh, in some cases, I do have paid attendance listed. But anyway, let's go through maybe the top 10 or so, maybe the top 20. Let's just start way down here uh, at the bottom here. You, we've got you know many of the, the leading attendances for a number of years were from New Japan Pro Wrestling in the Tokyo Dome. Uh, with attendances reported upwards of 50,000, 60,000. I guess because the Inoki Retirement Show in 1998 had to be the biggest uh, wrestling show uh, of all time, at least in Japanese history, that had to get a reported attendance of 70,000. Um, it turns out what we know about the Tokyo Dome at this point is it, for a wrestling event on a wrestling configuration, it probably doesn't hold much more than maybe 50,000. But yet, here we have all of these. If we, I don't want to go too crazy with this, but let's see what happens. If I, if I can sort just by New Japan Pro Wrestling, uh, let's see what, 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 we're, what we get here. Let me just get this chart out of the way. Hopefully, I can recover that later when I do want to show it. But you can see all the Tokyo Dome events here. And they've got attendances of 57,000, 54,000. Maybe I have edited this since... Uh, yeah, okay, I have changed this. The announced number, for example, for this April 4th, 1998 show, which was the Inokia Retirement Show, uh, I'm pretty sure that was 70,000. But we've got something maybe more reasonable here, 57,000. Were there really 57,000 people in the building? I don't know. I don't know. And if we could even probably sort this to, to show all promotions, but let's choose a venue of the Tokyo Dome. So we need to deselect all the other venues and just select the Tokyo Dome for the venue and there were even some all Japan shows here there should be Noah here Noah is, is left out here so I'm sourcing this information from prowrestlinghistory.com and I don't think now if, if I look at the actual Excel file that you can find if you google Excel prowrestlinghistory.com you will find a really useful spreadsheet uh, with the file name event info which I'll drag into the view here and just just to double check to see if they have the uh, if they have the Noah shows in here because no Noah ran a couple at least two Tokyo Dome shows in 2005 and 2004 and uh, let's see is is there any Noah here there is Noah here okay so where are the Noah shows okay Noah had reported attendances 52,000 for 2005 50,000 for 2004. And for some reason, that didn't make my, uh, my my sheet here. But anyway, let's see. So let's let's first of all, let's just talk about, we're going to talk about two things here. The biggest attendances of all time, all the caveats that come with that. And then secondly, we're going to talk about the biggest gates of all time. 
the biggest money events as a live event of all time. So we take away the filter here for the venue and we just sort this by total attendance. <sighs> At the top of the list, we have the North Korea events. At Mayday, Mayday Stadium in 1995. These are listed in, in the spreadsheet as New Japan events. They're kind of, you know, this is the collision in Korea. So WCW is working with New Japan for this. Supposedly, so this is a two day event uh, April 28th, 1995, April 29th, 1995. Supposedly 165,000 people for the first day. Supposedly 190,000 people for the second day. Of course, the big match is on here on the first day. Shinya Hashimoto versus Scott Norton on the second day of the main event. Ric Flair versus Antonio Inoki, I believe in their only meeting. Um, so these are big events. Probably, you know, the, the big thing theme we're going to encounter here is that there are, there are let's, let's say, normal wrestling events that actually, you know, in a capitalistic manner, uh, market themselves and try to sell tickets and have drawn big crowds and have drawn big gates. And then there are, uh, in 1995... This North Korea situation, and then in modern times, the Saudi Arabia situation, where we have uh, authoritarian governments basically paying for very large wrestling events that are attended by people who may or may not have chosen of their own volition to go to the show, but there they were. Um, were there really this many people, over 100,000 people, almost 2,000, 200,000 people there on the second day? I have no idea. I'm sure the crowds were large, but uh, the prevailing. Uh, Conclusion seems to be that many of the people in in, uh, in Pyongyang at Mayday Stadium on these days were probably directed to go to the events. That's what they were made to do that day. We have reports, I believe these are extracted from the Wrestling Observer, of $7.5 million on the first day, $8.5 million on the second day. Uh, if you adjust that to inflation, that's $12.5 million, $14.1 million. Uh, is, are these numbers real? I have no idea. And who's who's going to extract the, the, the real truth from uh, uh, something that happened in 1995 in the Democratic People's Republic of North Korea or of Korea, of Korea excuse me. Um, but when it comes to more normal events that are not used as instruments of propaganda, the largest attendance in pro wrestling history, and this is what I believe it is, at t Stadium, WrestleMania 32. Attended by, this is from an Observer report, maybe a total attendance of 93,770. Uh, paid attendance, I believe, to be 80,000. Uh, turnstile count, uh, according to the Arlington Police, which is what they told me a couple years ago when I emailed them, was exactly, if I, if I pull up the, uh, the paid WrestleMania attendance Google sheet, uh, I've got a note in here that reminds me what it is here. If we scroll over. 80,709. Of course, the announced attendance, over 100,000, 101,763. According to even Vince McMahon on a WB earnings conference call, uh, Vince McMahon said himself that the 101,000 was not the paid attendance, but it included ushers and ticket takers and things of that nature. So, after that, we have the Wembley Stadium SummerSlam 1992 with almost 97,000. Uh, total attendance again not sure what the paid is there then after that the silver dome with its 78,000 uh, of course the announced attendance for that was let me see if i know it 93,179 or something like that let's see here 93,173 and uh that is google says that is disputed and that is a matter of of uh And if you argue about that in the right place, you will be offending someone's religion. 93,173, according to the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, 78,000. Um, when, when I've looked at, we have discussed this on earlier episodes of WrestleNomics. We have looked at pictures such as the one I'm about to open and put on the screen here. When we have, oh, here's, here's a David Dixon span that has, I believe, a large picture of the Silver Dome in 1987 for WrestleMania 3. If we make that even bigger here. So, I believe that this 
this audience probably has somewhere right in between 78,000 and 93,000, which I think turns out to be about 86,000, maybe total attendance. Maybe that includes comps. So maybe the paid was 78,000. So. so after the much debated and very contentious WrestleMania 3 attendance, we have 2008, the Citrus Bowl with its announced attendance of uh, 74,635. And we know uh, in, in an SEC filing, WWE rarely disclosed the actual precise, uh, probably rounded to the nearest 100, attendance of WrestleMania. This is WrestleMania, what number WrestleMania was this? I don't know. 2008, I'm sure someone out there is screaming, telling me what number that is. But that is, well, it's got to be 24, right? Because 23 is 2007 with Trump. So anyway, 63,100 is the actual paid attendance that is in an SEC filing. After that, we have uh, the, the Trump mania, 2007 WrestleMania, WrestleMania 23 of 74,287. Again, that's, that's an announced number. That's probably up from what even the comps, I would guess, comps plus paid is probably a, a bit less than that. Uh, then we have this most recent WrestleMania at MetLife Stadium, 74,000. Uh, the, the announced attendance was, was higher than that, wasn't it? If we pull out the, uh, here we go, the announced attendance for the most recent WrestleMania in 2019 was 82,265. And I believe that these numbers here in this total attendance column are extracted from the Wrestling Observer. But the paid attendance, we know because of KPIs, uh, that the paid attendance was closer to 63,000. How do I know that? Uh, because in WWE's KPIs, they always publish the average attendance for North America for the quarter with WrestleMania and without WrestleMania. And they also publish the number of events that they do. In this Google Sheet, I can do the math here. You can find this Google Sheet linked on WrestleNomics.com if you want to check over the math yourself. And uh, we can we learn from this that the paid attendance had to be between the ranges of about 60,400 and 65,500. And the median of that is 63,000. And again, for the uh, much disputed WrestleMania 32 attendance, we know that the paid attendance must have been between about 77,000 and 83,000, the median of that being about 80,000. So continuing on, we'll do a few more here. Uh, the MetLife Stadium WrestleMania uh, in 2013 with 72,000, and that's probably an observer number. Let's see if we pull up the, the 2013 WrestleMania in the Google Sheet here. Going back to 13, the announced attendance was 80,676. So this is probably more of an idea of how many were in the building. And then KPIs reveal that the paid attendance was 69,000. Going back to 2002 in the Toronto Sky Dome, 68,237. Astro Dome, the, uh, the famous WrestleMania X7, 67,925. So attendance, uh, it's really hard to, in most cases, get an idea of what the actual attendance was. For the most recent WrestleManias, again, we do have a pretty good idea of what the paid attendance was within a few thousand, with plus or minus a few thousand. Uh, we, we know what those attendances, the paid attendances are. Harder to say what the actual number of people in the building was if you want to include comps in that. Um, in the case of WrestleMania 32, we do know it's a, a bit over 80,000. Uh, through the turnstiles, according to the Arlington police. And uh, just to answer, answer some common questions that come up here, the frequently asked questions, uh, people often want to know, how can WWE lie about their WrestleMania attendance when they're a publicly traded company? The investors would sue them if they were lying, so they must be telling the truth about 763,000 people at WrestleMania 32. So my understanding of the situation is that the WWE reports their attendance on, t on television, yes, on the broadcast. But the main thing that the investors care about is not necessarily the attendance, but the amount of money that was generated from the attendance. So WWE puts out a press release, usually that night or the next day after WrestleMania, and it says, this is how many people we drew, and they restate that number that they announced on television, and but then they also name the gate, how much money uh, was generated through ticket sales. And that, I believe, to be a legitimate number. So in the case of WrestleMania 32, which is somewhere on here, the, the number that they put in the press release was 
three hundred, and I have no reason to believe that that is a fabricated or exaggerated or inflated number. So if WWE was lying about how much revenue they were bringing in, that that would be a serious legal problem for them. But uh, to exaggerate about attendance, apparently not as big of a deal. And in, in fact, I think I think we have a caller on the line uh, who's holed up somewhere in Stanford, Connecticut, who wants to weigh in on this. And make sure that Mr. Uglemore more caller in WrestleMania, we were proud to set our attendance record of over 100,000, which includes, by the way, uh, ushers and ticket takers and all of that, but 101,000 paid. But nonetheless, it was a record for us. So there's Vince McMahon on an earnings report clarifying that the 100,000 100, number for WrestleMania 32 included ushers and ticket takers and things of that nature. So again, attendance is difficult to talk about, but gate we know with, with greater certainty. So I have a, a graph that I put on a coffee mug, in fact. Uh, and there are WrestleNomics listeners around the world who, uh, who have that same coffee mug. And it has the, uh, the attendances for WrestleMania. Where is that? It's this image right here that basically shows the last, what is this, the last, how many WrestleManias is that? 12 WrestleManias. Actually, the coffee mug has the last 11 WrestleManias on it. But it shows a column graph comparing the W announced number for each WrestleMania to the known paid attendance or the, the median of the range that is known. So moving on to the biggest pro wrestling gates of all time, the top 10 biggest pro wrestling gates of all time, adjusted for inflation into 2019 USD. And we have, at number 10, the New Japan Ricky Choshu retirement show on January 4th, 1998, drew $6 million at the time, which if you convert to, uh, to modern dollars is about $9.4 million. After that, another Tokyo Dome show, the New Japan vs. UWFI show, which was run by New Japan from the dying days of UWFI. This one main evented by Kijimuto vs. Nobuhiko Takata, drawing about $10 million in modern U.S. dollars. Then after that, WrestleMania 30 from New Orleans in the Superdome, drawing about $10.5 million. And that was main evented by Daniel Bryan, Randy Orton, Batista in the three-way. And the, uh, the Undertaker versus Brock Lesnar streak ending match. Uh, of course, no one knew it was going to end the streak ahead of time. Big surprise. But uh, after that, the Antonio Inoki retirement show in 1998, drawing about $10.9 million in modern currency. And then after that, it's all WrestleManias. Uh, we got WrestleMania 29 in East Rutherford, New Jersey, which was main evented by The Rock and Cena rematch. About $13 million there. The WrestleMania 31 in 2015, that's in Levi Stadium in Santa Clara, California, main evented by Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar. Of course, you got Seth Rollins running in there to cash in the money in the bank and become champion. $13.5 million in modern currency. And WrestleMania in, in 2018, which was, where was that? That was in the Superdome as well. And that was, God, who was in that? I have, I have such a terrible memory for uh, yeah, another Lesnar Reigns main event. And Undertaker versus Cena speculated, right? And that's where Ronda Rousey has her first match and a tag match against, uh, with Kurt Angle versus Tri Triple H and Stephanie. And then 2017, the year before that, that, that one's in Orlando with $15 million. And who was on top in that? Lesnar versus Goldberg. And that's Undertaker versus Reigns. I think to, uh, to go into a little bit of depth here, I think by now these, these late WrestleManias are less about who's on top and more about the legacy and brand value of WrestleMania. A lot of these tickets being sold well ahead of time of any matches being announced. So I don't want to mislead people and... and tell people that this is why it drew. Although Roman Reigns is on top in a lot of these, isn't he? Uh, WrestleMania 35 in 2019, the most recent WrestleMania. Does anyone remember what was on WrestleMania last year? Let's see. WrestleMania 35 in MetLife Stadium. Ronda Rousey versus Becky Lynch versus Charlotte. And uh, Seth Rollins versus Brock Lesnar, right? Probably other stuff. And then WrestleMania 32 is the, the biggest pro wrestling gate of all time. $17.3 million at the time. And if you bring that up for some inflation, that's $18.3 million. And that has, what, Triple H versus Roman Reigns on top. What else? What else does that have on top? So I'm more bringing this up to let us remember uh, wh what was on this event. Undertaker versus Shane in the Hell in a Cell, with Shane falling off the top of the Hell in a Cell. So that is the, the biggest 
money gate of all time. Now, when you think about how much an event draws, especially when, when uh, things are more comparable in the era of, say, the 90s, the 2000s, going up to 2013 when you had pay-per-view, uh, or if you had close circuit with the earlier WrestleManias and the earlier Starcades, you think about how much uh, an event drew. You, know, you want to add in not just ticket sales, but pay-per-view revenue that was generated, maybe any merchandise that was generated. In more modern WrestleManias, maybe you want to lump in even the uh, the the adjacent events that are that are piggybacking off of WrestleMania, like NXT Takeover, like Hall of Fame, like the Raw and, and the SmackDown that are that are running uh, on the same week, and maybe even the indie events, even though those are obviously different organizations. But just to think about how much money WrestleMania is drawing. Of course, every year uh, after WrestleMania, WWE puts out this press release based on some survey that, that tells you how much, how many hundreds of millions of dollars were generated for the local economy in terms of that they're trying to consider and calculate the money that was contributed to hotels and to restaurants and things like that and things of that nature. But uh, if we count the government shows, let's call them, and uh, count the North Korea shows, and count the Saudi Arabia shows. Let's see what happens to this graph. There we go. So to include the the North Korea and Saudi Arabia shows, we end up with 13 events. Is that right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 events. So if we were just looking at the top 10, this, uh, this day 2, uh, Pyongyang Sports Festival, Collision in Korea, uh, wouldn't make the top 10, but 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. The, the day 1 would just barely make the top 10. So day 2 has got 12.5 million, but day 1 has got 4.1 million in modern currency. That puts it above WrestleMania 31, 2015, and above WrestleMania 29, 2013. But I estimate based on uh, WSEC filings that every... So we're up to one, two, three, four, five of the fifth Saudi Arabia show for WWE in a, as, as part of the 10-year agreement to provide two live events per year to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. I, it's, it's pretty evident from SEC filings that these events are worth at least $50 million per event. Uh, it, it appears WWE is getting late payments uh, on the last couple events at least. So those events are coming in with apparently some interest or, or something in excess of $50 million, maybe something closer to $60 million. Uh, how do we know this? How do we know that WWE Saudi Arabia events are really worth $50 million, that much more than every WrestleMania ever? Well, let's look at WWE's trending schedules where they report their revenue. Well, let's make it bigger. And let's look at the the other segment. And you can see in... Q2 2018, where the Greatest Royal Rumble, the first big Saudi Arabia event for WWE happens, the other segment under media explodes into $60.6 million, where in prior quarters it had been no higher than $20 million, or more normally, more like $9 million, $9 million, $12 million, $7 million. And if we look at this footnote here, we look down at the bottom of the page here. It says, other forms of media monetization reflect revenues earned from the distribution of other content, including but not limited to scripted realities and other in-ring programming, as well as theater and direct-home video releases. So what it's saying there is that this other media segment includes uh, money from reality TV programming, uh, money from theatrical stuff, which is W Studios, Money from direct-to-home video releases, which is home entertainment, which used to be broken out separately. But since that's uh, generating less and less money, they've decided, I guess, to roll that into something called other media. But it also includes uh, revenue related to other in-ring programming. So that's where the, the WWE Saudi Arabia money comes in. Okay, And then you see, not just in Q2, this is an enormous number, but later on when they go to back to Saudi Arabia for Crown Jewel, it jumps up to $63 million, where in the, year, in the quarter prior it was just 12 million and then in q2 2019 when they go back there again it's 57 million small quarters in events that do not contain a saudi arabia event and then in q4 2019 with the uh, i believe it's crown jewel the second time crown jewel 2019 it's up to 56 million dollars so to put this in, in a better visual context here's a column graph showing you the quarters for this other media segment just as this is revenue for other media 
in all these quarters before 2018, before the Saudi Arabia deal begins. And it never gets higher than 20 or 21 million. And in really good quarters, it's 21 or 17 million, maybe 19 million. But in other quarters, it's 5 million, 7 million, 9 million. And then the, the Saudi deal begins and it skyrockets in certain quarters that contain those big Saudi Arabia events. So that's how we know that. And if we look back at the, uh, the graph we were looking at just a moment ago, so again, just to compare, and uh, th th these numbers could be hi higher, could be slightly lower. I, I, I think the, the most recent events appear to be worth more than, than 50 million. Uh, former W co-president George Berrios, who, who was the president at the time, uh, on the Q3 earnings report said that uh, they had, W had received a payment of, I think, over $60 million for, for, a, uh, for that would have been super showdown because apparently the, the bureaucracy of the Saudi government uh, causes these payments to uh, most recently be late. And maybe that has something to do with why talent was delayed after that event, stuck in Riyadh. So again, these are just government shows. I don't know if it's even correct to call these gates. In the more traditional sense, WrestleMania 32 is the biggest pro wrestling gate of all time. 17.1, or I'm sorry, $17.3 million. Closer in 2019 money to 18. Point three million dollars. So that's all I wanted to say. The the attend just get an idea of what the biggest attendances are of all time, what the biggest money live events were of all time for pro wrestling in this time where we are stuck in our houses, our homes, our apartments, whatever we have. And uh, WrestleMania will not be highly attended. WrestleMania will not be it will not have a huge gate. Uh, I estimated. Where's the the graph for it? WWE forced to move WrestleMania out of its expected event, or a venue of Raymond James Stadium in Tampa Bay, Florida. So missing out on probably about $16 million on a live gate, somewhere between 15 and 17 probably. Who knows, they could have even set a new pro wrestling gate record. Maybe they would have broken the $17.3 million gate record. I don't know if they would have gotten as high as 18 to break the, the record adjusted for inflation. But missing out on a, in a big gate, maybe around $16 million. Missing out on probably an average of $1 million per the, each of the arena events they would have ran at the former ice ice is it igloo the igloo I think it is yeah, the arena in Tampa Bay because they would have ran an NXT takeover event they would have ran a Hall of Fame a Raw and a SmackDown I estimate around an average of one million per event that's a total of four million dollars they're missing out they're missing out on about three point three million dollars in venue merchandise they would have, that they would have expected to sell during the week so the network value is probably saved to a great degree because they're going to go on with WrestleMania on the day that they plan to do it. But yeah, a total of 3 plus 4 plus 16, that's a total of $23 million that WWE is forced to miss out on because of coronavirus. So I think that's all for WrestleNomics for now. You can follow WrestleNomics on Twitter, at WrestleNomics. You can go to WrestleNomics.com and see a lot of the data that's related to a lot of the charts and graphs and tables and figures that we talked about today. You can follow me on Twitter at Brandon Thurston. So, stay safe, stay, stay healthy, avoid COVID-19, and we'll talk to you on WrestleNomics next time.